Hey, I'm James from Smoking Dad Barbecue, and the Kamado Joe Joe Tisserie is one of my all-time favorite accessories for the Kamado Joe. It just opens up a world of flavor. Cooking with live fire, whether it's beef ribs, or chicken suvaki, or shawarma, or things like that, just taste amazing on the uh, Joe Tisserie experience over the live fire, live coals. And it's a lot of fun interacting with the fire and raking coals. And we recently confirmed an internet rumor that the Joe Tisserie, despite being 18 inches for the classic, 24 inches for the Big Joe, somehow the 18 inch fits the 20 inch char griller acorn. So we uh, are going to go from hypothetical confirming that it fits uh, visually to actually cooking a rotisserie chicken on the acorn and see how it performs. If it actually gives that same great experience that I'm used to on my Kamado Joe. So let's fire it up. Bottom vents all the way open, top vents all the way open. Let's add a little bit more charcoal. Now we don't wanna add too much. I've already pushed what remaining charcoal I have towards the back. So we'll just get a couple more pieces here. Okay, so I've stacked my Fogo Super Premium to the back. One of the things that's nice about the Super Premium, you're actually getting branches. These are branches that are harvested from farms. So they're not cutting down, uh, you know, sort of fresh trees or taking down the rainforest. They're using what farmers are discarding as part of pruning their plants. So I do love that. And it's a unique charcoal burns really well. So we've got this built in a little campfire orientation towards the back since our bird is going to be sitting here. In fact, I might even push that up a little bit more. There we go. So now we can grab our grill blazer grill gun, fire it up. Here we go. Perfect. Let's let that build some heat. Let's go prep our bird. Okay. As you can tell, we already have the seasoning on our bird. I did this the night before. So we get a bit of an overnight dry brine for the rub. It was really simple. I just made up uh, two tablespoons of fresh cracked black pepper using my pepper cannon out of the same two tablespoons of diamond kosher crystal salt, and then one tablespoon of garlic and half a tablespoon of paprika. So that's exactly the mixture rub that we have left. Put this on, put it in the refrigerator, just like you see, and that will help the skin dry out. So it's not only gonna give us the benefit of the seasoning, working its way into our bird for a nice, tender, juicy, uh, great flavor. It will also help increase the crispiness of the skin. Uh, since we're going to be spinning and we've got our wings <laughs> and legs flopping around, I've just prepared a little bit of butcher twine that we'll be able to uh, truss that up once we get the rotisserie spit on. So let me take you fast forward while I glove up here and get ready to start trussing up our bird and get the uh, rotisserie spit on as well. Also have a meter probe ready to go for when the moment calls. So let's get our spit all the way through like so. Then we're going to take our tongs, just back them off so we can slide them down. And I don't do these too tight at this stage since we want to be able to slide our bird so it's nice and center, but we will tighten that up when we get over to the grill. Okay, so using the spit rod, we were able to contain our wing tips here uh, so that they wouldn't flop around too much. This one is just on the outside, but it's pretty snug, but I'm still going to put a little bit of that butcher's twine around so that we don't have anything falling into the fire once we start cooking. It's always much easier to do this at this stage than when, you know, things are burning up, flaring up, uh, and everything is really hot and getting uh, near impossible to start making any adjustments. All right, that looks good. Got a meter probe here. I'm gonna go for the white meat, since that's where I like to track, so it gives us a nice clean spot to get in past the line, try and avoid the rib cage as well as the cavity in the middle of the bird. Looks good. Let's go get this on the grill. Okay, so I just moved a little bit closer to a power outlet since that's one thing we do need for the Joe Tisserie. We're up to about 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's just drop this shelf so the Joe Tisserie motor can spin. Grab our Joe Tisserie ring. Let's try and line it up best we can without any larger visible air gaps. That looks pretty good. So now we can drop in our Jotisserie motor over here. Reach across you for a second to grab our bird. Slide that in like so. Perfect. Now we get our high heat gloves just so we can align the bird into the middle here. That looks good. Turn on our Jotisserie and then close down our dome so we can start adjusting our vents. Okay, so we've got our bird on. I've set up our meter app to track 
today's cook. And I want to try, ideally, if I could, keep temperatures in and around 330 to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Since in a rotisserie setup over a direct fire, it's really easy to cook the outside of the bird at higher temperatures and get amazing looking skin and actually be completely raw inside. So that's where if we can get down into even 300 degrees, I'm completely happy, which I have no issue achieving on our Komodo Joe, uh, Big Joe, Big Joe Series 3, uh, since we get a little bit better airtight seal. I've done everything I can trying to shimmy the ring around, but there's a few spots where there's the smallest little air gap. And so if I show you a clip here of the vents, I'm down to a hair on the bottom uh, and even less than setting number one on the control tower top, which is normal for a Joe Tissery cook. Normally, wherever you set your vents, you go to about the 50% mark since you're just gonna be allowing that little bit of air, it makes that much of a difference. But on the Acorn, it's so efficient. That's why I've installed that gasket to try and help regain a little bit more control where I can control where the air is coming in and how we want to adjust it versus it having a few leaks and that air sort of driving our temperature all over the place. So right now, I think we're in holding about 370 to 380 degrees, which is a little bit on the high end. So we'll keep uh, making a little uh, adjustments here and there in terms of trying to seal it off as we're going. And right now, so far, so good. I'll rejoin you in a couple minutes when we're going to add some smoking aromatics. So those adjustments seem to be doing the trick. When I look at the meter app, we've stopped accelerating away and we're no longer in runaway train status. Uh, we're just about 30 degrees beyond where I'd want. So I'm seeing about 370 to 390 degrees on the meter probe, which is as it rotates sitting right above the live fire. So it will read a little bit hotter than the 360, 370 degrees or so that we're seeing on the dome. So now that we've got that stable, let's go add our herb smoke bomb. I'll meet you over by the grill. So poultry is one of those things. Oh, that's looking good. Poultry is one of those things that is really easy to over smoke. And so I like getting some rosemary, thyme, or things like that. And you throw a couple of these sprigs into the fire and you will get a really light aromatic smoke. It's really fragrant. Uh, it smells and tastes amazing, but you don't get sort of the over smoke uh, profile that you can get if we were to go with wood chunks. Poultry and the skin and poultry in particular is really uh, prone to over smoking and that'll make the skin rubbery. So we don't want that. We want to take advantage of our dry brine auto automatically getting that amazing aromatics. I'm going to close that. Uh, but what that will give us is just a really nice gentle smoke without adding any rubberness to the skin. Okay, my meter just sent an alert to my watch. Let me know that our cook is about five minutes away from ending. So we wanna come back and take a look and see how our skin is taking shape. So when we're uh, about five minutes away, so we're right now about 150 degrees Fahrenheit, this is the time where we want to open the dome and start to focus on our skin. Normally, again, if we were a little bit lower and slower, this is the spot where we've cooked our bird all the way through nice and evenly, and we want to start to focus on the presentation. The worry here is, again, we started to see some nice skin early on when we were back at 120 to 130 degrees Fahrenheit. It looked really good already at that stage. And so we may be a little bit overdone on the outside. I don't know. Let's go find out together and see if the skin needs some extra work or if it's already done and we want to just try and let this finish cooking the rest of the way without exposing it to any additional flames. Let's go check it out. All right, moment of truth. Oh, that's looking good. Actually, I don't think we are overdone on the skin and a few little brown spots, but we could take letting that crisp up even more. So at this point, I'm gonna do just that. Let it sit here open, it'll continue to cook, but we will start to get a little bit of flame now coming up once the air hits this Fogo charcoal and it'll help us just crisp up any last little bits. So this is all a matter of personal preference. So this is plenty done for some folks. I like a little bit more crisp and when we've done the dry brine, you're gonna get that extra benefit of that skin rendering out some fat. So let's, let's let this fly for the next few minutes. All right, this is looking mega. Let's turn off our jotisserie, get this off, and we're gonna just let this rest for about 10 minutes now on the board. So I'll get some high heat gloves so I don't get burned grabbing this, but we'll just lift it up, pull it out of the jotisserie, let that rest, and start shutting down our fire. That's usually easiest if I remove the Joe Tissery ring so that we get a good seal and are able to uh, control slowing down our fire gently. 
Well, it certainly looks the part, so now to find out if it tastes the part. So just while we're going to be handling the spit and prongs and getting the probe out, I'll just use some high heat cotton gloves and then go with some food safe nitrile gloves over top of that just to keep everything sanitary and clean and make sure that I don't get burnt in the process. So we can remove the meter probe, it's already done its job. Start to pull back our tongs here, which these do cool pretty quick in that 10 minute rest. Perfect, that is looking good. Let's carve it up. Start by removing those uh, two extra pieces of butcher twine that we put in just to keep everything contained. And let's start breaking down our bird. Looks good, let's get a couple slices here. All right, time for the best part of the video, the taste test, let's dive in. Got my eye on this piece right here. As you can see from the board, very juicy, that's good. Bodes well. Wow, I always like to start judging a chicken with the breast, similar to a brisket where you judge uh, how well you cooked it by the flat since that's the most difficult part. The breast is the same for the chicken where it's really easy to dry that out and we're not getting any of that going on here. This is incredibly moist, juicy, and there's a whole bunch of things that hit our palate all at once. So starting with what I noticed first, is just that extra little bit of char that you get from the being exposed to the flames that just adds that fire kiss element. Next thing I got was almost like a, a wave of, uh, like when you take like a breath mint and you sort of get that cooling wave. I'm getting that from our smoke, our aromatic, that that fresh aroma, you, you taste it, but it hits your mouth like, a, like almost like a mint candy does. It just sort of washes over. It's really pleasant. And then next thing that really got me is just that juiciness and the seasoning and the salt and the flavor all the way through. And you can uh, absolutely, I do it all the time where you just season and cook, especially if it's a weekday and you want to get a meal on, you don't have time to do the overnight dry brine. But often then your seasoning is just surface uh, layer. It's, uh, you know, really great on the outside and then can get a little bland. We do the overnight dry brine, that salt just really accentuates the star of the show, which is the protein that you're cooking. And so you just get chicken that tastes more like chicken all the way through and it's really pleasant. So I'm going to call this, does the jotisserie work on the uh, char grill or acorn? Uh, two thumbs up, absolutely does work. We had to manage our, our air gaps. There's just a very fine margin of air to try and maintain some temperature control especially with that extra gasket material that I've added, I think is the saving grace here to help make sure that it wasn't even more of a runaway uh, train in terms of controlling our temperatures. But I give this two thumbs up, absolutely works. That's it for today. Before you go, be sure to check the members section. I go live once a month uh, and we can chat in a bit more of a one-on-one -on -one setting versus these pre-recorded videos. And it, take a look at the subscriber count while you're down there. If you haven't already subscribed, hit subscribe because when I hit 100,000 subscribers, I'm doing a giveaway with Komodo Joe, including a Joe Tissery and a Komodo Joe Series 2. So all you have to do is subscribe and you are entered to win. That's it for today. I'm James from Smoking Dead Barbecue signing off. And remember, don't be afraid to, Fire it up. Think I will. Mm-hmm.